So there's lots of ways to use uh, Google Slides for animations. Um, and one thing, if you're doing a unit on any any topic or content, so say you're doing a unit on honeybees and students um, have done a little bit of research and you want to collaboratively create a collection of jokes and animations that might just synthesize some key features of that unit um, before they um, investigate it more. So say they've been looking at uh, what are the honeybees and their natural enemies. So they've done some research. You have a link to a website that they, they have res resources to or they've read about. Um, and you might uh, work in a group where they would each make one slide uh, animation, cartoon, or joke about that specific um, honeybee enemy. So say you have ants and the fact that it assaults their nest, um, it, it um, eat both bees and wasps, and it feeds on their larva, larvae. And so, you know, that's an enemy um, of the, the honeybee. So someone, you know, one student might um, just take a slide, um, think about a, a something, you know, topic, simple topic of what did the honeybee say to the ant. And here they would bring in um, it using the research tool. And you could, again, I've typed in honeybee here and I'm under photographs, make sure images. And they'll bring a picture of the honeybee in. And again, now that's an object on that slide. And you can animate any object um, and just say, I want to actually turn it around. I want the bee to be facing this way. So I, you just simply slide it that way. Um, and so you might start with, um, and the other thing you, you want is an ant. So I'm going to type in here, uh, ant. And it's better to find a photo with a white background. That way, that specific creature pops right out on the slide. As long as your slide background is white, it will work fine. Um, so, so again, there's a lot of nice photos of um, ants that are uh, with a white background. Oh, some of these look terrorizing. So, so you would, um, again, bring in, bring in the, the ant. And again, that, that image becomes an object on the slide. Um, there, there we go. You can slide it up. And so now I can, um, I'm be keeping it very simple, just the honeybee and the ant and the question, what did the honeybee say to the ant? So now I'm going to animate it so that they're not all there at once. So once we move from our title slide, it's going to transition to this slide. I want um, this question. I'm going to make sure that's selected and I'm going to go to insert animation. So here um, I'm going to have the question just appear um, after the previous slide. So it's just going to appear when it comes from the first slide and it's pretty fast. So then, then the second, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the honeybee and I'm going to add an animation. And I'm, I don't want it to fly. To, I'm gonna, it'd be nice to have it fly in from the left and not on a click. If you wanted to click through it and when you click on it, those things happen. But I want it to work automatically without having someone to click. So either, I, I can have the bee fly in with the same time the question comes up or after it comes up. So I'm just going to do it after. And then I'm going to click on the ant and add an animation for that and I'm going to have it I don't want it to fade in I want it to fly in from the right so from the right there we go and not on a click but after the honeybee comes and I could either make it come in slower a little bit so the ant come in a little bit slower because he's not as fast as a bee and those are three things I have so now I'm going to just test this out I'm going to hit play and there's my question, there's the bee, and then the ant comes crawling in. And now I want the honeybee to say something. So I'm going to just add, um, before I can add an animation, I need to make a text box. So I'm going to actually click here. I'm going to do a call out so it looks like a, a speech bubble. And I'm going to click, click that, and I'm going to put it over here. And... Now it's got a dark background and I might want to make it a little bigger and you, again you can stretch the box out and move the B a little bit over and move this over 
down. So it looks like, again, it's coming from the B. I'm going to make it just a transparent background. And now I can type, double click, and I could type what would the B say. And the B might say, well, buzz off. Because because he he uh, he knows that that ant is dangerous, and I might want it a little bigger because I I want to make sure he knows um, that the, the ant hears me. So you make that a bigger, and make, pull it over there, and maybe the apostrophes don't really show up. So I'm gonna stretch that and move it over again. You can you get the idea of where where it makes sense to have those. Um, and there it is, but I want that word to come in um, after everybody's there. So I'm going to click on insert animation. And here again, here's the order of my animations. And I've clicked on that object and the default is fade in, but I want that to, to um, I don't want it to fade in. I want it just to appear because I don't want it to, you know, buzz off as loud. It's not slowly coming on and I want it to come on. Um, after the ant comes. So I'll hit after previous and about medium speed. So let's see how that all works. So I'm going to click on that. And here's the question. What did the honeybee say to the ant? And the ant comes slowly in. And there he says buzz off. So that that's one slide. And now what might be helpful is to have some information come up after that. Um, so again, I might have, um, again, this, this uh, information, or you, I would have, you know, maybe write it out myself, but, you know, you could have some text in, informing people about what, what this is all about. So I'm going to, for now, just copy that, and I'm going to add a text box here. I'm going to have it down in here, and I'm going to paste that information. Well, and, and now, when I copy from a website, sometimes the code is weird. And I always like to hit this uh, little clear formatting. It's a T and an X. If you click on that, it, it's kind of nice because it, it defaults to your slide um, font and it, there's nothing strange inside as far as code. Um, and I might want to make it a little larger so it's readable. And I, and I also like this text, so there we go. So now, and again, you can make it bigger. Um, you could make these things disappear and just the text be there, but but I want this to come in after. I don't want it to be there the whole time. So again, I'm going to select it. I'm going to insert. I'm going to hit animation. And this I probably will fade in, and I'm going to do it after previous. And I'm going to have it come in, you know, pretty fast. So let's play the whole thing. So here I have, uh, what did the honeybee say to the ant? And there comes the ant. I might speed him up a little bit and buzz off. And then, then there's the information um, about what the ants and how they um, are a danger to the honeybee. So I'm going to close this now. And then, again, you, you could have other students, since Google Slides are collaborative, you could have another student click on this slide and do the same sort of thing, you know, how as creative if they want about moths or mites or wasps, those other natural enemies to the honeybee, um, or even looking at some of the um, issues uh, that we have with the pesticides today um, and, and the honeybee um, decline. So I hope that's helpful. Um, and again, oh, the other thing you might want to do is click on, again, all once all your slides are done um, and you select them all, um, so you might want transition. So that's the here. If you click on change transition, right now there's no transition. But if you wanted each transition to be sort of, um, you know, flip or cube, uh, and again, depending on that, and you apply to all slides. So now when you play it, let's, let's hit present. Um, here we are, it's loading. And now the first slide, because it's a title slide, I'm going to have to click it to, to change. So if I click, there's a slide, and then then there's our animation. And I might, again, as I said, I'm going to speed the ant up a little bit. And that's um, our, our, and then we'll flip. Um, oh, sorry, I clicked on it. I didn't click on that. I clicked on the, um, that transition. So you have to click through to make the cubes go through. But um, 
I'll show you how to, um, instead of having to click through, uh, let me hit escape here. Instead of having to click through the transitions to make it work, this is where when you publish it, so I'm going to go to file, I'm going to publish it to the web. So this is if you're on a website or have a link, it will automatically start your slideshow. And again, I like to speed it up a little for animations. And if you hit um, publish, yes, I do want to publish. Uh, here's this link, so I'm going to copy that link, and I'm going to click it up here. And again, there's I'll show you the bit, uh, embed code as well. But so now it's automatic. I don't have to click through it for it to work. Every time, um, every two seconds after a slide is complete with its own animations, it will click through. It sits there two seconds and goes. Um, and again, there's nothing on the slide. So, so it really, um, both animations in objects in the slide itself and the uh, transitions are two ways to make it animated. So that's that's one, and and the other thing I'm and I'll uh, I'll I'll show is uh, the next step. We'll make a hand drawn animation, add it, and then add sound and make it a video. Um, so I hope that's helpful, and good luck.